Hello fellow engineers and welcome to Park Beyond, a super polished theme park game that allows you to engineer and upgrade your rides and coasters to impossible levels. There's a 35 hour plus campaign that can be played through, but we're going to be heading into Sandbox because I want to see everything this game has to offer. By the way, this video is sponsored by Bandai Namco, so be sure to challenge your imagination by boosting the link in my description to check it out now on PC, PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. Right, so there's there's loads and loads of different levels we can do. Oh wow, this one has a dam and oh, this one has a bridge. Yeah, so loads and loads of different levels to pick from. But I've gone for Exploration Park because it gives you these little challenges which will just give us a bit of direction. So first one down here, connect the path. So over on the side, this is where all of our rides and stuff are. So we've got the path tool here. We can select whatever sort of path we want. So we literally just click there and we can draw this like wherever we want. So we can just do a bit of that. And the challenge is complete. It's gone green, but we're not finished because we want to make a happy face. Anyway, moving on, the next challenge is over this way. We've got a nice little balloon ride here, which might be good for some architects or kids or something. And we've just got to path it up. So we'll do, that's the exit. That was done with the normal path. If I do that, we got the queue path. Uh, oh, that's quite a nice one. So now we've got queue path. That's all connected. Up here, it wants some shops. So we'll come to shops. And you'll see there's all sorts of different types of shops. We've got food, drinks, vending machines, as well as service and staff facilities. Because this game is actually really deep and like the management side of it. But anyway, since this area seems to have like some sort of electrical theme, we'll get an alien planet taco shop. We'll wang it there, give it a bit of a rotate. Oh my goodness, look at the flamethrower coming out of that. It's because they're hot tacos, two chilies. So we probably want a soft drink shop next to it. That is what we call marketing. Get burnt by the hot chili, cool off in there profit. All right, next challenge, we can finally build some rides. We've got to build a flat ride over here. So up here, we have the flat ride sections. Look how many rides there are. What do we go for? What do we go for? What is ooh, what is this? A slingshot? Okay, we'll shove that there. I'm going to need a fairly long key path for this. This is going to be, I feel like this is going to be in demand. So we'll just do a little winding one like that. And oh, we've unlocked a new area with more challenges. So before we go look at those other challenges, let's just go on this and we can say showcase. Ah, oh, so down down here, there's that. Oh my god. Oh, what? Oh, it's like a huge swing and it's pulling it up. Yeah, it's swinging. Oh, wow. There's like spotlights that follow it. Oh, as well as as well as flamethrowers. Oh, look at the seats. Hang on. We got to get this thing open. We need some guests to come check this thing out. Speaking of guests, have you actually wondered how people get to this park? Well, this is our park entrance. It's sort of like mining themed, I think. If we follow this back, look, there's a train station connected to a train track. And can you see what's coming? It's a train. People arrive by train. So, train pulls in at the station and then our guests leave that and then head into the park like that. No teleportation in this place. Anyway, it looks like our first guests have arrived at the big swing and they are heading in. So they get to the ride, go up the stairs. And then how do they actually board this? It sort of looks like they're going to be like laying forward. Oh yeah. Oh, I was looking at the back. Look, they're like sacks. They're open sacks. Oh, they're ready to go. <laughs> This is awesome. Oh, ooh, and it's now nighttime. Oh, this is going to be a really cool ride at night with the flamethrowers and stuff. Right, so they've been pulled up to the top. <laughs> So you can see they're there and they've gone. Whoa. So from down here, Bruce, man, they're... <laughs> They are flying. Yeah, they seem to be enjoying themselves. Despite this guy at the end probably losing his eyebrows to the flames, they absolutely love that. Decent. Right, well, anyway, over this way, look, we've got more challenges. Yeah, and this looks like a Western-themed area. Oh, look at this. We've got, like, gold mines and all sorts going on. All right, so I've just placed some trash cans because this is going to be a problem. We can also hire janitors, which will help with that. So look, here's our janitor. And no, that is not a leaf blower. It sucks up the rubbish. So that should help the park get clean. I'm probably going to hire a few more actually. I've got unlimited funds, so why not? Um, oh, you can also select their salary. They can be minimum salary, so minimum, subpar, adequate, generous, or a lavish salary. Well, considering my editors get paid that much, but their output is about that much. I think I'll just keep it in the middle. All right, next up, we actually need to connect this new western area to the rest of our park. So path along here. Oh no, there's a rock in the way. So I guess we better avoid the rock somehow by going straight up. Here we go. Avoid these rocks. Oh, wow, how high can we actually go with this thing? Okay, well, it seems to keep going up, although I can't actually get my camera any higher. <laughs> But uh, that's good to know, I guess. Um, we do actually need to get back down so we can get to the park, though. So uh, I guess we'll we'll just start heading 
down. And people can now get to the western part of my park. Decent. Look, the game even gave me a tick. All right, looks like most people, for some reason, are choosing to avoid my path. Except for this little guy, Louis Lopez. Yes, we can follow him, but we can also do first-person camera. Look at the sights he gets. Oh, he's decided to turn around. Architect move, Louis. Architect move. All right, so looking at Louis' thoughts, it looks like he's exhausted. So maybe we need some benches on this path. So we'll put some benches at the bottom. This can be like base camp. Oh yeah, people are loving that. People are loving that. And yeah, people looking tired. So let's just do some pit stop benches halfway up. So I'm pretty sure as long as we put benches all the way up this, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh no, I forgot. Oh, I forgot how high this thing went. I can't even get benches up the top of it. Okay, there's like a thousand benches on this thing. So surely people will actually make it to the western area. So so we'll leave them doing that and let's complete a few more challenges. All right, so this is a ride called the Ring of Fire. Let's just see how it works. So, oh, wow. Okay, yep, I can, I can see that making you dizzy. All right, so I passed a few more challenges. It was just like get paramedics and stuff. Uh, but look at this. The first couple of people. Oh, I was going to say they're making it to the other side. They're my janitors. No. <laughs> No guests are coming over this side. Well, that is a bit of a shame. Fine, I'll put a shortcut path in, but I'm making it the heart sprinkle color to show that you're all wusses. All right, the next challenge is actually quite an interesting one. So we've got these three shops here. You can see if we click on these and click this button here, we can see how different types of visitor like each one. So the teens absolutely love this shop. Of course they do. It's a kebab shop. Uh, same with the energy drink shop and same with that one as well. So our next challenge, we've got to build a ride that attracts teens teenagers because then they're more likely to use the shop. Oh, that's actually genius. So if we head into flat rides, we have this sourcing thing up here. So flat rides appealing to teens. What are teens into these days? Pac-Man. Okay, I'm not sure it fits with the Western theme, but we've got the Pac-Man ride. How does this actually work? I can see Pac-Man at the bottom. Let's let's showcase this. So, oh, it's like a little sideways roller coaster. And they, oh, they stay vertical and they spin a little bit. Yeah, so from the front, look, they're playing Pac-Man. And yeah, as the coaster goes round each bit they like spin and oh that's cool and it's double-sided as well anyway we finally unlocked a new area and this one has a coaster so the challenge finish test and open this coaster okay by the way check out this dragon just like flame throwing absolutely everything in his path <laughs> Love that. Anyway, this is the coaster we need to redesign. It's just a standard coaster. Um, I might change the color theme from like ham colored to a bit more classic red and black. That already looks better. But right, time to edit this thing. So you can see there's a steep hill lift at the start and then we can literally just take this wherever we want. So we can choose like what height we want to go to. I probably want to do a big hill to start with. So let's change the roll to do that a bit. And then add a huge loop around like that. And corkscrew around to there. -ish. And then more corkscrew. Yes, yeah, a nice little inline twist there. And then for the next one, we'll head down this way. Up around here. Man, I love how like smooth you can make this. We'll then do a bit of a helix round here. And then we've connected it to the end. So we've just made a nice simple little coaster there. So now we better test it. Oh man, from down here, it looks pretty sweet actually. So it looks like the test coaster made it back. I mean, just actually, is it going to make it back? Come on, come on. <laughs> Ease into the station. There we go. There we go. Uh, the game is actually at like times three speed as well. Oops. Still, coaster done. We get fireworks. All right, then ride is open. Teens are going to love it. But it's a bit standard. It's a bit normal theme parky. So let's head back into roller coasters. And let's have a look at some of the prefabs they've got. Just to inspire me of how I can make my own a bit more unique. So I'm quite intrigued by this. The merry goes round. So if we plonk that like there, next an entrance there, then we should be able to see how this works. <laughs> And it looks insane. So if we showcase this, this will really show you what you can do in this game that you cannot do in others. So it starts off, it goes into a spring, which bounces it back. So then it heads along each of these and goes boing, boing, <laughs> boing. <laughs> You can't do this in any other game. Hence, the stuff you can build in this is really only limited by your imagination. Okay, so the final challenge on this, that little red one, is to build one more roller coaster. So let's do it. Doing everything we've learned. What sort of cars do you want to use? There you go. We'll use shark cars and we'll color them so it looks like they're... <laughs> 
<laughs> it looks like they're not in a good way. But right, to start, we use the hill chain. And of course, we are going to want to go up. Oh, wow. How high will this thing go? 297 meters. Perfect. All right, so now we head over that way. We gain a lot of speed down there. And oh, wow. We're going to go so deep. We're going underground. So down to minus 124 meters. Because I want to try and see what the absolute tallest loop we can do is. So if I hold it there, we should be able to see the train car. It's still got... Oh, wow. It's still going like 100 kilometers an hour. So if we do a loop over to there-ish. So let's see if it's going to make this. Got to 106. Oh, got to 69 kilometers an hour. Nice. So that seems to be working fine in the test. Now, but being an engineer, I, I like shortcuts. I don't just want to be... I don't want to have to manually do all this stuff. So thankfully over here, we've got these place coaster elements. And look at all these. So these allow us to place things like double helixes. One of my favorites, the cobra roll. Corkscrews that you can thread through places. But above these coaster elements, there's this button, place modules. Now this is where it gets interesting. So you can add things like this, a three-way fork. So you can switch it per car, which means you can end up doing something like that, which basically means as your train comes down to this point, the car splits off. <laughs> And then hopefully they'll join together rather than crashing like that. So if we shove a train merger in there, and hopefully the train will merge back, which means we can continue on. All right, so I got this bit nailed now. They don't crash anymore. They join back together. And then we go off rails. <laughs> It's a shark on land. But then we're back on track and back going up a chain lift. And then we'll come down and we'll end up down here. Now down here, I think is where I want to add a cannon. Aiming right through the hole there. So basically, the roller coaster coal come into the cannon. And then boosh through the ring of fire. And it should land down here where we can carry on. So got to mind the buffalo down here. We could potentially ramp over like that just so we avoid the path yes this is a game where you can ramp roller coasters you don't just have to shoot them through cannons now the trouble with these ramps you do have to make sure you go in the right speed you can easily over or under shoot it so you got to be careful all right so after a bit of tinkering my ride is finally done oh why'd you, why didn't you go in we cannot afford the fee at shark bait even though people are saying it's a bargain they can't afford it. Hang on, you got 193 quid on you. Shark bait only costs 50 quid to go on. All right, fine, it's a tenner. My shark's getting hungry. Yes, we have our first two victims. I mean, our first two riders. So we got Michael and friends. I'm gonna lie, Michael. I feel like adding an S to that was a bit of a uh, an exaggeration. Still, welcome aboard. All right, so they're off and they head through the shark mouth to start with because they are the bait. They'll be traveling along the shark's intestines. So first off, they gotta go up the, up the hill lift, which we've seen already and then from up here you get a really good look at the rest of the roller coaster yes i've gone a bit mad all right i'll tell you what let's ride the front seat for this because you really want to see what's coming up ahead so straight down into a huge drop mind the trees mind the trees you can see <laughs> you can see that path i built up there uh, then we come down another drop this has a nice smooth inversion. Look at the rest of the coaster up there. Um, here you're like, oh, has the, has the coaster stopped? Has it stopped? Hasn't quite stopped. It was all a surprise. And then we are moving back on our way. And then here as the sun is setting in the background, we're going into a nice double helix here. Another one in the other direction. Look down there at the rest of the rides. And then we're doing a loop and coming around here and around there. And another loop. And look here, we got a nice corkscrew. Mind your head on that rail. And then this is where it spits off. So if we look over there, there, we can see the other ones. We're no longer in the front seat. We're now in the back seats. <laughs> So yeah, we've joined back together. This is where we're actually off the track there. We were literally gliding along the ground, but now we're back on the track. And then this is where we come down into the cannon. We jumped across. Anyway, then we go round this rock in a helix. And then we're back up on another hill climb, which you can see goes very, very high up the staircase. So let's head out that camera and try and find them. Yeah, they're down here. So they're going to go all the way up here. <laughs> All the way up. And then, yeah, it just basically goes into a bit of... A little bit of what I like to call organized chaos. Because uh, whilst this does look like I've just gone absolutely mental, it legitimately works. Now you can see teens absolutely love this ride. Families, not so much. Right, and back in the front seat. So <laughs> there's the spiral paths. Oh, mind your head under there. 
And then we say goodbye, Spiral Path. We are on the roller coaster and we're coming down. We're coming up. Look how smooth and nice this is. Look at all that coming up. So yeah, looking down, you can really see what's about to come. <laughs> oh, it took so long to actually get this to work as well. But it was worth it. It was worth it, I tell you. We can watch the coaster from this angle. It's just going through some like smooth loops at the moment. Then we'll go through a load of like inversions and stuff. And you can see, can you see like in there, these red things. That is another new part that I added. Because I thought hill chain's a little bit boring, if I'm honest. So as the coaster makes its way through all these little twists and turns, the sun is rising just in time for us to see the elevator. So look, it goes in there. Then half the cars go up, half stay down here. And then we go on to the next elevator. And the other elevator goes down and picks up the rest of the train. And yeah, basically, we just... <laughs> We just use these to get to, I think it was like 300 meters again. Because if you want to make it through all these different turns, you gotta, you got to have a few hill lifts. And this is one that's engineered to perfection. So after that, we go down a massive, massive hill. But uh, generally, it's a nice, it is a nice smooth ride. It, it looks dangerous. With a name like Sharpbake, you would expect it to be dangerous. But it's actually very gentle on the body. Now, the only thing is, it is a ride that takes about five years to complete, I think. Still, what would you rather be doing at the time? Riding the shark bait coaster? Or I don't know, doing homework or something. So round here, we have a loop that crosses a loop. It's a loop within loop. Loopception. But yeah, I think this ride would be very, very fun to ride. Right, and this could be the most dangerous part. It looks dangerous, but it isn't actually. You can see the coaster goes round, it loops back. It's just a little crossroads. I don't know if they actually have them in real life. I assume not because it seems super, super dangerous in my opinion. But it's not. It works fine. Anyway, down here, there's another cannon across the river. And then that is Michael and friends back safely. Wait, where are they? Never mind, never mind. Because over this way, I've got something else to show you. I've made loads of other coasters that show off all the sort of new parts you can add. So I got some victims, I mean customers, waiting for this next coaster. We'll just wait for it to come back into the station. All right, here it comes. So as you can see, they're motorbike cars. And there's, there's lots of different cars that aren't stuck together. So there's another one behind it. And then another two behind that that formed the whole train. So the new people are on. So they head out this way. They just head along this, which... Well, it seems a little bit tame, but there you go. Speed is building up. They head around this corner, and then suddenly, whoop, the first train has gone. And it goes, <laughs> it goes all the way up to here. And then we've left the rest of the train down the bottom while this does loops and stuff. And then it ends up springing back along this way to come around here. Meanwhile, trains are still going up the initial lift. Or eventually they end up on a separate track and back at the station. And don't they look like they had a good time? <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. So this was one I like to call Stairway to Heaven. Uh, literally. Anyway, right next to it over here, I've got the jumping one. Now, unfortunately, this is quite a quiet area of the park. So there's, oh, there's no one. It's not going to be riding this one. So we'll just shove it on showcase so you can see how it works. So essentially, we go up normal, normal sort of chain lift. So we're going up. And then as you look to the right, you're like, hang on a second. Where's, where's all the track? I feel like they used all the track on that bit up there. Anyway, we get to the first drop and we've got a bit of a corner around here. And then suddenly, whoosh, we do a jump. And we land safely, sort of. <laughs> and then we do another jump. And basically, it just does a whole lot of jumps. But uh, it works perfectly. And look at all the headroom we have above it. Anyway, over this way, we have one of my favorite rides. If we just look up a bit, look. So many crossovers. You might think, well, it's not too scary, Matt. They're just they're just on a single train. Like, why, why would that be scary? The only scary thing about this is having to go through those flames. But look, as they come up, they split into different cars. So they... <laughs> So then, oh, no, it's so close. <laughs> I would absolutely be pooing bricks on this. All right, I've decided to run this one while in the seat, but we're in one of the rear cars, so we can see just how sketchy this is going to be. So through the flames up here, and then the cars will split off. We're following the one ahead, but ah, that's close. <laughs> and you can see there's cars, like, everywhere, and oh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> Oh, man, I'd be tensing like everything as this went round. But uh, we end up just behind the car in front. 
back in the station. Lovely. All right, so as we head into nighttime, we got this one, which is pretty similar. We all start in one car, but it's sort of just like a racing one. So you can be in one car, racing your mate in the other car. And uh, from this angle, very, very efficient roller coaster building. You end up back at the station all behind each other. Isn't that nice? All right, and then finally, you have this one, which is a wide wing coaster. So you hang off the side of the track like that. You can see you're just in a single car, but this one, this one's one of my favorites. So you head down the first hill, you do your nice smooth corkscrew over to this way, round the corner over there, and then as you come up here, check this out. The train splits into four. So then we got four little carriages going across. And then they all end up on the same track. We had different tracks going on there. And then down here, they split again. So you're sort of racing, but you're not racing. And it's just so cool that, like, you can do stuff like this. I assume there aren't any coasters in real life that actually allow this, do they? Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I have no idea. But all I do know, that was Park Beyond. And if you guys enjoyed, boost your like button. Be sure to click the link in my description. Check out the game for yourself. Thank you so much, Bandai Namco, for sponsoring today's video. But for now, I'll say peace, love, and super dangerous track design. Bye, guys. Look at the mess of my coaster.